All right, so in this demo, we're gonna talk about door measuring. So this will be an exterior door and how to measure and why we measure the way we do. This here is a jam. This is a cross section of a door frame. This is called the brick molding. That's the molding that goes on the exterior. It's usually about an inch and an eighth by about two inches wide. The jam standard is four and nine sixteenths measured from this leading edge here that's usually flush with your drywall to this edge here that the brick mold mounts to. Four and nine sixteenths, one sixteenth greater than four and a half. This is your interior casing that could be any size. Here in this depiction is two and a quarter colonial, we could say. Um, it could be anything, it could be flat casing, it could be whatever width, that doesn't mean anything. Um, that, that doesn't factor into the measuring of the door per se. So if you take another cross section and you put two cross sections together, here we have these two jams. Those jams are basically the same thing that we have here. So if you look at the shape of it, that's this one. Except here, I was missing the weather stripping that goes on the jam. So each door has weather stripping. So essentially, this here is your door slab, and then here is the hinge, and let's say this is your door handle. So when we measure, we're not able to see this area behind here. So there's, there's a common practice amongst many different installers, and that's to basically open your door, and you measure from where the hinges are to where the latch plate is. And whatever measurement that is, you're going to add three quarters and three quarters because the piece of wood here that's left over after the mortising or this rabbit here that the door pocket fits into, the door fits into, is three quarters on both sides. So that's an inch and a half. So typically in a 36 inch door, we're going to have what we call the unit. Unit dimensions the farthest left to the farthest right measurement. So basically measuring the unit itself, including the frame of the prehung. So from left to right, we would measure, and let's say you get 36 inches here, which is commonly a 36 inch door. We're gonna know that the unit dimension would be three quarters and three quarters added to the 36. So what we have is a unit dimension of 37 and a half inches. That's for the width. So that's denoted as U dash U period D. So 37 and a half. On a height, you would want to measure, typically take into consideration your stoop or whatever it is that the door rests on. And you want to take a look at your floor on the inside. Your floor could actually be built up pretty high. So we essentially always want to maintain at least 7 eighths of an inch um, of floor clearance. So from the bottom of the slab to the finished floor, you want to maintain 7 eighths of an inch. I'd say no less than 3 quarters because if you wanted to put an area rug or something under there, the door might rub up against it. So in this case, we're going to follow the same practice. You put your tape measure on your floor, let's say hardwood floor, carpet, whatever that might be, and you're going to measure up to the bottom of the head jam. Now your trim on the inside would be here somewhere. That's the trim. Here is your drywall. That's the drywall. So this is a cross-section side view. That's your casing. Your casing sits back from the edge of that piece of wood by sometimes an eighth, a quarter, whatever it might be. So from the floor to the bottom of that head jam pocket, you're gonna get some number. Generally speaking, you're gonna be somewhere around, if it's a standard door, you're gonna be somewhere around 81 inches, 79 and 7 eighths or 81. Because we know, again, the same theory as here, where this piece of wood here is three quarters, that's that same jam piece. The whole frame of the door is made with the same type of lumber and the same pocket. So the thicknesses are about the same. So here we have three quarters. So if we measure from the floor, finished floor, to the bottom of this piece of wood, and you add three quarters of an inch, you're going to arrive at your unit dimension that you need for the cavity of the opening. If you wanted to assume, if you wanted to go with the measurement of the door that's in there now, you would measure from the exterior. From underneath the sill, you're going to measure all the way up and stop at the bottom side of the jam. Now, the bottom side of the jam, we haven't talked about this, but generally... It's somewhere about an inch and a quarter thick. If it's an older home, I'd say older than 1980, you might run into a piece of wood that's a true two inch piece, but generally speaking, it's about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. I always err on the side of caution, and I would say that an inch and a half is a good assumption because the worst that could happen is that this piece of wood is actually a little bit less, and then your unit dimension uh, might fail. Um, so you want to consider that to be at least an inch and a half um, 
or inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Inch and a quarter is your safest bet because if that turns out to be an inch and a half, you have a quarter inch of free space to work with. So if you measure from the finished floor, the reason why I measure from the finished floor is because I want to have enough height room here. So if this door looks like it's embedded pretty low and the floor sits up pretty high and you can't at least finish off the back of the threshold with a piece of cord around, then what you want to do is find a way to make the door shorter so that you could actually put some kind of material under here, some kind of vinyl PVC or something, bolt that down or nail it down, and then set your door on top of there. That's a pad up. So that'll give you a little bit better floor clearance. But let's say that the clearance is fine and you, all you have is some kind of hardwood floor here. So you'd measure from the finished floor to the bottom of this lip here and then you would add somewhere around three quarters of an inch. So let's say that right now my measurement's giving me 81. I know that this is about three quarters of an inch and then we arrive at the unit height of 81 and three quarter. Some vendors actually have a difference in terms of what their standard sizes are. Usually across the board, it's always gonna be around 37 and a half inches for the unit size. Doors generally come 32, 34, and 36 for exterior doors. There are some 30s and there are 28s, but those are not common. So anytime you have a door size of, let's say the door slab is around 36 by 80, you're gonna know that the unit size is 37 and a half by 81 and three quarter, simply because you're following the logic that is three quarters to each side here. And then on the height, it's from underneath the subsill or from the subsill rather, or the finished floor, depending on how you're measuring, to the top bottom part of the head jam, and then you can add three quarters of an inch. So a standard 36 by 80 calls for a unit size of 37 and a half by 81 and three quarter. Now to also further know if this door is gonna be a standard, what you wanna do is you wanna run a tape measure on this door. So that this piece of wood usually is gonna be flush with your drywall because your drywall will be here somewhere. So if your drywall is here and this is your casing, you're gonna have a little bit of a reveal left. So you run your tape measure from this edge here all the way to the outside, but you're gonna stop short of this exterior trim. Now you know the brick mold because generally it's set back a half an inch from this edge. There's a reason for that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for right now, the jam is actually how much or how far the door will project from the finished substrate on the inside, whether it's drywall or whatever it might be, all the way to the exterior stopping short of this exterior brick molding. So from here, string a tape all the way across. If you end up with about four and a half inches or four and nine sixteenths, then we know that that is a standard door jam width. There are many sizes and it's not just limited to four and a half. If you have an older brick home, then this four and a half might not be true. Now you're talking about perhaps six and nine sixteenths of an inch, seven inches, certain city homes, especially Greystone and, and brick homes might even have 12 to 13 inch jams. But most standard sizes these days are four and nine sixteenths. So the jam is one width that you need to capture. That is a, a must. Um, you don't wanna ever extend beyond this jam. If you, if you aired and you needed to add a piece of wood here, I wouldn't go any further than about a two inch piece because now your screws start getting too long and then the amount of leverage and force that's exerted on this extension is too much. And eventually this seam here, the wood will split. It'll break off or you'll get um, a jam extension that falls off with the brick mold. So the brick mold, the purpose of the brick mold is similar to the interior trim. This brick mold on the outside, what it allows the door to do is in the opening, it allows you to provide a half an inch setback left or right. Usually it's away from the, from the middle. So um, if this is mesial, then you go away from the door half an inch and then the brick mold starts from there all the way to the to the wall now in most cases when you install a door this is the jam so we want to go flush with the drywall the door projects out some distance now brick homes generally have this type of substrate behind here um, that could be a, a plywood generally it's some kind of insulative material um, whether it's like an, uh, a cardboard type uh, material or it could actually be a sheet of plywood. It could be a lot of things or a thinner sheet of plywood and some tar paper. At the end of the day, the purpose is to set your door straight with your flush, flush with your drywall, and then let it project outward. So if this happens just to be a two by four wall, you're gonna know that your drywall is at least a half an inch if it's the drywalled wall. So you're already at five inches here. And then you end up having something here and then your brick. So the purpose of the brick mold is that you could actually add a piece of trim here and then what it does is it comes out far enough 
to hide all this stuff back here and allows you to provide a caulk seam against your brick and one against the door here. Later on, you'll find out that this brick molding serves another purpose. Another purpose for this brick molding and the reason why it's set back a half an inch, it's because your storm door Z-bars or your storm door frames actually sit on this piece of trim. So it's crucial that it's set back half an inch. Why? We said this is an inch and a quarter. We said this side's an inch and a quarter. But yet when we measure from the inside the inside pocket, usually it's going to give you a straight measurement of 32, 34, or 36. So if it's true that it's 36 to the inner inner of this pocket, it possibly can't be 36 here because this piece of wood's thicker. So what that is is it creates a little bump out so that your weather stripping sits and when your door shuts, it shuts up against it. Now, in this distance here, if this was a 36 inch door, I know by default, this area here is gonna be 35 inches. So the purpose of the brick mold being set back a half an inch on this side, and if you were to put one on this side, it has to be set back a half an inch back over here, is simply because the distance then between brick mold and brick mold will be 36. Standard doors for storm doors is 32, 34, 36. There are smaller ones, there are wider ones, but those are not common. So we'll stick this to a standard 36 by 80 opening, and then your brick mold opening must be 36 inches. So if you measure for a storm door, you're going to measure from brick mold to brick mold, and the brick mold must at least have at least an inch of flat space here. And it shouldn't have too many decorative designs or creases. That'll make it more difficult to install, if maybe not even possible. So for now, a, a, a brick mold that projects out at least one inch and it has a run of about one inch should be suitable for any kind of storm door. Sometimes you'll find it that it's only a three quarter inch piece of wood out here. That's okay. There are some storm doors, the cheaper ones that are a little bit thinner and they use thinner rails that you could still mount onto a three quarter inch piece of wood. But 90% of all installs today, it uses a thicker piece of wood out here that's at least an inch and an eighth projection outward from the house. It gets installed a half an inch setback and it provides at least a one inch of clean space for the storm door Z bar to sit on. So eventually you'll put your storm door on there, it has the hinges, and your storm door works in this area here, and then there'll be another frame here that the door bumps up against. So it's the same principle as this, except storm doors are measured on the brick mold side. So a lot of people have this issue with measuring or how to measure for an exterior door, they measure the slab. In reality, the goal is to measure the distance between a two by four and the other two by four. So we use circumstantial evidence here or not so much circumstantial, but you measure with what you've got here. And then we disregard the fact that there might be an extra four inches of vo void space. We always have to assume that the jack studs are relatively close to your jam on both sides. If there happens to be no jack studs, then we're if our door sits within this parameter, we're able to add enough structure to make the door function properly. The thing you don't want to happen is order a door that's much too wide and you end up having to have to do something with this jack stud because although it is possible to move a jack stud, you have to do it correctly by re removing the drywall around the inside and then remove these jack studs, change the header that goes across the top, make them longer and place the jack studs further back. The reason why you don't ever really wanna do that is because those calculations have been done by an architect when the house was being built and if you were to remove a jack stud, then your load displacement over these jack studs might not be appropriate uh, for these jack studs if they're deficient or they're missing. And then you'll have structural changes in the opening above a doorway. And essentially you'll fall responsible for any issues that result from that, like a sagging roof line or soffits and fascias on the outside of the house sagging in that area simply because the load um, isn't properly displaced over an opening of a doorway. There'll be other videos out there that explain exactly what that all means, but for now, this is the most easiest way to measure any kind of exterior door, and to be honest with you, you could also apply that to an interior door, but there are some changes. We can't no longer assume that this would be three quarters of an inch here, and that this would be an inch and a quarter. Interior doors, they use a flat jam. It doesn't have this bevel here, so it's three quarters and three quarters, so you measure the same way. Inner to inner, add an inch and a half, that gives you the unit width. From the floor to the bottom of the head jam, from the bottom of the, to the bottom, I'm sorry, from the floor to the bottom of the head jam, add three quarters of an inch, that gets you your unit height. The reason why you always want to use unit heights is because the unit dimension is what is, will be going into a cavity between one jack stud and the other jack stud that mirrors this one. There'll be one on this side. From floor to header, which is similar to the jack stud, but it's the horizontal member. 
that's called a header. It's usually two by some type of material, two by 12s, two by 10s, two by sixes, depending on structure, that'll be above a doorway that you cannot alter. So we want to capture the measure from jack stud to jack stud, floor to the bottom of the header. And the best way to do that is using this, the unit dimension, because there is no room for error. If you just provide a rough opening, the rough opening really doesn't provide enough information because a rough opening could essentially be the brick mold. I mean, the uh, masonry rough opening, which is on the outside, or it could actually be the rough opening between jack studs, or it could actually be a, an opening between two finished areas, maybe with drywall return, and the door happens to sit inside there. So unit dimension is foolproof. Everybody tends to use that these days. And then we arrive from unit dimension, you're able to arrive at what the rough opening should be because there are some known calculations that you do because you essentially want to maintain some distance between your door and this jack stud. Same thing on the other side between the header of a door and the um, between the head jam and the header that might be up here. You want to also maintain a distance. And normally in this area here, you never provide any screws because you don't want to make anything above a doorway. You don't want to tie it into a header. Only exceptions are door with side lights or very wide units that do require some shoring. But for a standard 36 by 80 door, you, you want to limit the number of screws you ever put into the header because this, the purpose of this header is to displace load. If it ever sags or it curls downward and you have a screw put on here, now you've made this jam a part of this header and then any load displacement that's incorrect on this will also be shown here. And then essentially this might drop down and hit your door and your door doesn't open and close properly or it won't allow for enough, ex enough expansion and contraction. Now, sometimes these jams do come a little bit warped and you might wanna put something in there to kind of straighten things out. It is possible to put in a brad nail of some sort, a 16 gauge, an 18 gauge, nothing more, nothing less, to be able to um, string, uh, straighten out this member here above a doorway so that your casing reveal looks good. But a unit dimension is the way to go. Most doors should be measured this way. And, and with that information, you always be able to get all the other bits of information that we would ever need. Jam extensions as well. So now we know the jam extension. If it require if it's required, usually it's because this jam exceeds four and nine sixteenths. So if your doorway has a bigger jam than four and nine sixteenths, as measured flush with the drywall and then out to the point that the brick mold sits on, if it exceeds that, then you start figuring out whether it's going to be good to do a field mold where we put in a piece of wood here, screw it onto your jam, and then your brick mold gets set back about a half an inch in from the edge. So essentially, the way this looks. It needs to look that way no matter if you take this out 1500 miles the brick mold should always sit a half an inch back but then like i said you don't want to extend this jam extension more than two inches so essentially you don't ever want to go more than six and nine sixteenths of an inch the reason for that is the screws become too long you need too long of a screw to, to attach the piece of wood to this jam and then the amount of leverage points that exist throughout this piece is just not going to be as sturdy as if it's a solid piece of jam and it's connected directly to your um, jack studs. So these measurements here are what you wanna use. You wanna use the unit dimension, arriving at the unit dimension by taking the size of the slab per se on the width only. Don't ever do that for the height because some doors have different thresholds. This one happens to be an adjustable high dam, or not a, a high dam, but it's an, it's an adjustable riser threshold. It's an aluminum threshold with an adjustable riser generally speaking somewhere about an inch to inch and an eighth total rise then you've got a door that's sometimes about 79 inches or so 80 inches and then you have a three quarter inch piece of head jam here on the thinner side that you want to take into account so from the floor to the bottom of this piece of wood add three quarters of an inch to whatever that dimension is then you know that you have a door that's definitely going to fit in this cavity worst case scenario if if the door is not jacked up as high as the floor and you measure it from the finished floor you're going to always have space under here to be able to maybe extend this out with a piece of treated lumber or vinyl it's always best to go vinyl and not treated because the treated lumber actually could react with the metals of the threshold causing them to oxidize dielectrically or um, other um, issues that could happen because of the amount of moisture that's in them your threshold could actually rot up so it's always best to probably use untreated lumber under there and then use some kind of tar paper or uh, sill tape to go ahead and wrap it um, neatly with a blow dryer so you get better adhesion, but that'll be another video. So for right now, it's just how to measure a unit dimension for an exterior door or interior door 
using the same logic. So if you use that and your jam size, you're good to go. Handings. The handing is always looked at from the exterior. So in, in, in essence, if this is my handle here and I'm standing here, I'm on the front porch ringing the doorbell, I take a look at the door. Where is the handle? On the left? On the right? In this case, it happens to be on my left. Now, the handing has nothing to do with the handle, so forget that. It's the direction from the exterior side of the door, the direction that the door swings into and which way. So in this particular case, if I'm standing on the front porch, which is the exterior side of this door, I'm going to say this door, if the, hin if, the, if the handle's on the left, it swings in to the right because you see the hinge here. So the handle being on this side, obviously you know that the door actually comes and it swoops into the right. So in this case, this door is considered a right hand in swing. So RHI, I for in swing, right hand for the handing. Exterior view always. Doesn't matter what type of door you're measuring, we're looking at. It's if you put yourself on the what you would consider the exterior side of the door, which is generally speaking opposite of the hinges. Use caution for doors that swing out. But just say generally speaking, doors usually swing into a into a home. So opposite side of the hinges would be the exterior side. You look at the door, which way does it swing? If I'm standing on the front porch here, this is the inside of the house over here. If I'm standing here, I look at the door, I know the handle's on the left, the door has to swing in to the right because the hinges are always opposite of where the knob is. So this is a right hand in swing. If the knob happened to be on this side and I knew the hinges were on this side, this door swings in to the left, this door would be a left hand. But in this case, this door is a right hand in swing, period. You don't make any other um, references for swing. Basically, the best way is this way. Which way does the door swing into and which way does it go? So the door swings into the house and which way to the right? So we know into the house means in swing and we know that the door goes to the right. So the right hand in swing. If the door happens to be the other way, it'd be left hand. If the door swings out, you got to use caution because now remember when you're standing out here, you're no longer on the exterior side of the door. Even though you're outside the house, this is not the exterior side because it's where the hinges are. So you'd have to reposition yourself on the inside of the house. Now you're looking at the thicker side of the frame. So essentially, the on an outswing door, the outside of the door happens to be on the inside. So then you would actually look at the door, find out which way it swings, and that would actually be the swinging orientation of that door. Now, you might say, well, that's no different than this door because if I was on the outside here and this door swung out, this would be a right-hand outswing. Well, it's true because this being the inside, I'd actually be looking at the door. I know that it swings to the right. Now, you'd have to reference it using outswing. You have to use the word outswing. So if you know the door swings out of your house and you're standing out there and you know it swings out, it's which way does the door swing from the position of being on the exterior side of the door? An outswing door, you'd actually look at it from the inside of the house and then you would say, outswing which way right or left so if this happens to be an outswing door and i'm standing here inside my house and i'm coming out to the yard i know this door would be a right hand outswing why because it swings out and it opens out to the right forget about what the knob is doing and any of that other stuff this would be a right hand outswing but in this original illustration this was actually an in swing because we said this was the drywall this is the brick mold this is your brick so this is an in-swing door, and it's to the right. So it's a right-hand in-swing. So with this, this, and this, you're able to order a door that you know will fit into the cavity of the opening that you're trying to replace.